the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Fathers and mothers of America, attention please. Upon the training you give your children today depends the future of America. Our system of free enterprise, personal liberty, and democracy cannot exist without educated and enlightened citizens. In about 14 minutes, our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, will have some helpful suggestions for parents. If you wish to equip your children to take advantage of all the opportunities the future offers, don't miss this important message. Tonight's FBI file, Murder on the Range. Since the time of Eve, there have been nagging wives who drove their mates to commit crimes for the gratification of their own selfish desires. A few of these crimes have made history. The rest, like that in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, have seldom caused more than a ripple on the day-to-day -day flow of news. But their importance, for each contributes its unit of force to the wave of crime constantly beating against the underpilings of law and order on which society rests. In a roadside lunchroom located on the seldom used Montana Highway, Betty Adams, wife of the proprietor, is just handing a check to her lone customer. Here you are. It comes to 40 cents. Here's a half a buck, Mrs. Adams. Keep the change. Thanks. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Betty? Oh, Betty? Yeah? That fellow leaves? Mm-hmm. Think maybe we should close up? I think we never should have opened. Oh, now, Betty, please don't start nagging. I again. ain't nagging. I mean business. What are you talking about? I'm fed up with this place. Fed right up to here. Betty. I mean it. Either you take me back east or I'm going by myself. What? We can't leave here now. Why not? All we've got in the world is tied up in this place. Then sell it. Sell it? Yeah. Could hardly give it away since the new road bypasses. Then let's walk out on it. Are you kidding? We'll find out if I'm kidding if you don't. Wait do a minute. So Jack, I've already I told said you. wait a minute. Well? You seem to have forgotten the main reason why we came out here. I know, I know. You done a stretch and you wanted to start all over again on the square. Don't wave that flag again. But, honey... You could have started all over back east. Then why'd you come out here with me? Because I fell for that picture folder talk of yours. And from now on, when I get the bite to see a little scenery, I'll stick a quarter in the Translux and get ten minutes worth of travel off. Betty, you've got... Yes, sir? Hello, Jack. Huh? Marty. That's right. Where'd you come from? Just passing by. I thought I'd drop in. Is this the bride, kid? Yeah. Betty, I, I want you to meet a a guy I used to know back east. This is Marty Williams. How are you? How do you do? Marty, how'd you know I was here? I forget who gave me the office. I'm glad I remembered it, though. What do you mean? Well, I pulled a little job in Seattle to get myself a steak and was heading back east. Uh-huh. I got in a game over in Idaho this afternoon and lost my role. There was an argument and I had to wing a guy. You mean you shot him? That's right, sweetheart. 
That's why I headed here. Huh? I gotta go under for a few days till they stop beating the brush for me. Marty, maybe you haven't heard. What? I'm square now. Is that a turn down, kid? No. Huh? If you're in trouble, Mr. Williams, you can stay here as long as you like. Now, look, Betty... I said he stays. you get up, Mr. Williams? About an hour ago. Can I fix you something? Some eggs, maybe? I already had them. Came in here and cooked my own. Huh? Where's Jack? He'll be down in a minute. Tell me something, will you? What? Is Jack really leveling with that honest John pitch? Yeah. Suck it. I've been trying to tell him that. This trap looks like it's starving to death. It is. And why don't he get off this kick? Step out and steal a few. Talk to him about it, will you? I think I will. Got any ideas? Yeah. I took a walk around outside a while ago. I saw what might be a real good touch. Save it for Jack. Here he comes now. Oh. Morning, Jack. Morning, Marty. What got you up so early? Sunshine, fresh air. I've been out for a walk already. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a pretty big ranch around here. Yeah, it's the T-Bar H. <laughs> they only got a couple of hundred thousand acres. Uh, where do they sell their cattle? They drive them to the loading pens in Canyon City, about ten miles from here. Ship them to Omaha. Oh, suppose a man wanted to sell only four or five head at a time. Still have to ship them to Omaha? No, no, he, he could get rid of them in town. For how much? Well, good beef steers are bringing 20, 25 bucks a hundred. How much is that? They run eight hundred to a thousand pounds a piece off the range. Somewhere around two hundred bucks a piece, huh? <laughs> Thinking of going into the cattle business? How many could you get in that truck of yours? Oh, four or five head, I guess. But hey, wait a minute. What are you getting at? Thousand bucks a load and five or six loads. That'd net us about three grand a piece, Jack. I said, what are you getting at? I need cash so I can move out of here. That ought to be a good way to get it. Buddy, what do you think? Sounds swell. I'm not getting mixed up in any cattle rustling. Remember what I said last night, Jack. Now, listen, Betty, I... Marty's come up with an idea it will give us a stake to get out of here. But... Take it or leave it, Jack. But if you leave it, I'm leaving you. Some 25 or 30 miles away in the Butte, Montana office of the FBI, agent in charge Kearney is standing over the teletype machine as it finishes tapping off a message from Washington headquarters. Franken? Yes, sir? Franken, remember the bullet that sheriff over in Idaho sent us the other day? The one they dug out of the fellow wounded in that scrap at the jukebox place? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Washington checked it against the unidentified ammunition file and found a mate. Oh? It was fired from a gun known to be owned by a Marty Williams, ex-mobster in the East. How did he get way out in Idaho? A description of Williams' checks with a description the sheriff got of the man who did the shooting. Oh, I see. According to Washington, Williams was last seen around Seattle. Well, then he must have been headed back east. Yeah. And since he's bound to be out of Idaho by now, that makes him a fugitive. And our man. Uh, but he's probably out of Montana by now, too. Unless he decided to go under for a while. <laughs> That's pretty hard to do in strange country. Yes, I know. Anyway, we can tell the sheriff who he was after and then start the ball rolling on Williams ourselves. Betty. Betty. I'm in here, Marty. Oh. Look, uh, when did Jack leave for Canyon City? Hours ago. I wonder what's keeping the guy. I don't know. You know something? Huh? I don't care. Oh, that's how it is, huh? Uh-huh. He don't know that, though, does he? He should. 
But he don't. Otherwise, you never could have conned the guy into this cattle swindle. Guess you're right. Well, that's too bad. Jack's a nice guy. Sure. If you like nice guys. You don't? Uh Uh-uh. What do you like? Heels. Like me? Yeah, I like you. (laughs) You don't have to sound so unhappy. Well, you'd be unhappy, too, if you made a career of it. Going for heels? Yeah. Come here. Hmm? I said, come here. Well? Look, sweetheart. I feel the same way. Um, Hi, Betty. Hi. Marty. Oh, hi. I'm sorry I took so long. What happened? Four trips, and the guy don't ask any questions. This time, he wants to know something. What? He wants to know why a big outfit like T-Bar H is selling stuff local. And only four or five headed a crack. What did you tell him? Well, it was lucky I remembered something I heard one of the T-Bar H hands say in here one night. About how the old man was letting him run a few head of his own on the side. With the T-Bar H brand on him? I don't know. You tell a guy in town the steers are yours and the old man's letting you run them on the side and all the time they got the T-Bar H brand on them? Okay, but What I had... big brains you got? You boys better go out of business fast. He swallowed what I told him. That's what you think. Okay, I'll prove it. How? Well, we were getting our last load tonight anyway. So I'll drive him in and sell him just like the rest. How's that, Marty? Come on. It'll be dark by the time we get over to the range. Okay, that's it. That's four. And room for one more. I guess so. This part of the job is a cinch. What do you mean? All the western movies I ever saw had a bunch of cowboys sitting around a fire, singing and playing the guitar with a couple of more out riding around the herd. They don't ride herd except in the spring for Brandon and the fall for Roundup. And the rest of the time, all these stakes run loose like this, begging to be picked off? Well, every few days, one of the hands rides out to check the herd scattered over the range. You must have timed things just right, between checks. We've been lucky, Marty. Well, let's get number five and get out of here. Okay. Swing that lantern over here. Okay. Uh, how about Toots there with a the white face? Okay, let's... Wait a minute. What's the matter? Shh, listen. Let's go. I'd have sworn I heard a horse when he... Yeah? I did. We're not by ourselves out here. Give me that lantern. Let's douse the light in case. Hold on there, you fellas. Give me that lantern. Never mind putting out that lantern. Whoa, whoa, boy. Easy, easy. Just stand where you are. Where? You ain't just helping yourselves. Hey. Don't I know you? What? Sure I do. Jack Adams, the fellow that runs that eating joint over at the That's old... That's enough for me. No, no, Marty, wait. Hey, look here, I wouldn't make no more trouble if I were... Oh! Oh, oh! Lock the back end of the truck, Jack. We're getting out of here. Well, one of you tell me what happened. We ain't got time for that. Yeah, but All I got it. All you need to know is a shot a guy and we got to lamb out of here. Jack. Yeah? Get moving, will you? I'm not leaving here, Marty. Huh? I said I'm not leaving. Don't be a fool, Jack. It's too late for that. I was a fool when I let you nag me into stealing the cattle in the first place. So you're going to stay here and let them come get you? I'm not going to wait for that. I'm going to give myself up. You don't expect me to stay here, do you? No, no. You can beat it right now with my share of the dough. You worked hard enough for it. Okay, Jack. If you want to play noble and take the rap. I'm not that noble, Marty. What do you mean? This was your job, too. But nobody knows it was me. I know it was you. What? And I'm not taking the rap for both of us. So you might as well let Betty have your car and stick around with me. I said nobody knows it was me. And nobody's going to know it, Jack. Why not? Because you're not going to be able to sell them. (laughs) 
sweetheart. That should make me your favorite heel. We will return in just a moment to tonight's FBI file. Now it's time for our weekly series of questions and answers on education. First question. Who is the most enthusiastic believer in college education? A college president? A high school principal? Neither one. Surprisingly, the answer is the man who succeeded in spite of not having gone to college. He knows that leadership demands a background of knowledge which, if it is not developed in college, can only be acquired by years of laborious effort. How do we know self-made men feel this way about college? Well, the Equitable Society has a plan called the Equitable Educational Fund, whereby far-sighted parents make sure, through life insurance, that their children will be well-educated no matter what happens. And a very high proportion of Equitable Educational Funds are taken out by parents who did not go to college themselves. Second question, what is an Equitable Educational Fund? It is a plan that includes these important features. One, the Equitable Educational Fund makes sure that money for education will be ready when your child is ready. Two, if you die, the Educational Fund becomes fully established. If you are totally and permanently disabled, the Educational Fund continues to build up without any further payment. Three, educational costs are spread out over many years instead of being concentrated in a few. Last question. How much will it cost to send your son or daughter to college? That question is answered in a memorandum that tells the cost of tuition, board, and lodging in 192 leading American colleges. In addition, it summarizes the long-range opportunities open to educated men and women in 29 industries and professions, such as architecture, dentistry, engineering, chemistry, life insurance, social service. The memorandum is crammed with information that every parent should have. Your nearest Equitable Society representative has a copy and will be glad to show it to any sincerely interested parent. Call him tomorrow. You'll find him in the phone book under Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, Murder on the Range. The average law-abiding citizen attributes great strength to every criminal. But criminals are not strong. They're weaklings. They become criminals because they cannot resist temptation. The temptation to take something for nothing. And therein lies their fatal mistake. The mistake that ultimately proves their undoing. Because one of the laws by which human beings live is called the law of compensation. And that law says that the only thing you get for nothing is nothing. About the time that Marty Williams sent a bullet crashing into the unprotected body of Jack Adams, a horse was pounding along a moonlit trail heading for the home corral. Uh, oh. Hey, what's going on here? Well, I'll be... Hey, give me a hand. Help me off. Sure, but what's wrong? I caught two fellas huh? in Dry Creek Canyon stealing cows. What? One of them threw lead at me before I could... Oh, come on, now. I'll help you at the old man's house. Yeah. Hey, Jim. Jim, it's Hank. He's hurt. Take care of his horse, will you? Come on. Easy now. Yeah. See? Who... Who was that? One of them runs that eating joint over on the old road. What? Jack Adams? Yeah. Never seen the other before. What did he look like? Didn't get a good look at him. Why? Well, all the outfits around got a warning from them FBI men in Butte today to keep an eye peeled for a man that... Done a little shooting crossing Idaho a few days ago. Yeah? Maybe it ain't the same one, but as soon as we get the slug out of here, I'm going to call the FBI like they said to get him over here. (laughs) 
Got your stuff packed, baby? Yeah, all set. Let's get started. Okay, you get into my car and head on for Butte. Wait a minute. Huh? What's the idea? There's a truck outside with nearly a grand worth of moo cows in it, sweetheart. Marty, you're not going to try to... Don't worry. News of what happens tonight won't get around before tomorrow. Yeah, but suppose I'll you... drive on into Canyon City with them tonight, sell them first thing in the morning, head for Butte, ditch the truck, pick you up, and we're gone. Where will I wait for you? Register at the Black Hotel. Use the name of Madison. Mrs. John Madison. Okay. Now get started. Be careful, Marty. Get started. I certainly wouldn't think Adams would still be sticking around the road stand, Connie. Probably not, Riken, but we might pick up a lead there as to where they've gone. You think the other fellow could be the man Williams we're after? I didn't get enough description of him from the cow wadi to tell for sure, but if this Jack Adams is the one I'm thinking about... And I'm pretty sure Marty Williams is the one who did the shooting. Oh, how do you get that? Oh, from Williams' record I got from Washington. He and a Jack Adams were mixed up in a gang back east, and they served a term together. Oh. Anyway, the slug from the cowboy's chest will tell us for sure when we get it in the lab. Well, but in the meantime... We... Yes, I know times are wasting unless we get quicker evidence. Here's the road stand now. Go ahead, Rankin. Thanks. Lights are out. Just the same. Be careful. Come on. You try the door. It's open. Okay. Give me your flashlight. Right here. Thanks. Let's go in. Don't turn on the lights. This is far enough. What? Look. On the floor there. Well, I think that's the body of Jack Adams. Yeah, let me have a look. Is it the same Jack Adams you were talking about? Yes. I'd say that description checks. Well, then that means that... Marty Williams. Well, where's Adams' wife? Williams can probably answer that, too. The boys with the ranch seem to think she was pretty fickle. What did you find? <sighs> Papers. Adams' pocket here. Look like cattle receipts. Five of them. Well, then they must have been working before tonight. Looks like they've already sold about 25 head. Where? Canyon City. Well, that's about uh, 10 miles from here. Yeah. And Williams must have taken the load they got tonight to Canyon City. Let's go. trouble. What? The guy at the stock pen gave me a funny look and went off somewhere, so I dumped the cows and beat it for here. Think you went for the cops? I wasn't taking any chances. Anybody could tell you're not a ranch hand. You shouldn't have gone in the first place. Skip I told... that now. Let's get going. Tonight? The sooner the safer, baby. What'd you do with the truck? I left it there. Come on, get your stuff and let's roll. <laughs> Yes, sir. The man you're talking about drove in here at the stock pen several hours ago. Where is he now? Well, he looked suspicious to me, so I slipped off to get a deputy. But when I came back with him, the fellow had gone. Cows and all? Uh, no, sir. They're right over there in his truck. A ranking? Yes, sir. Look that truck over, will you? Right. Look, this man that drove the truck, uh, was there a woman with him? Uh, no, sir. Now, where's the deputy now? He lit out for Butte. What for? Well, he found out that this fellow who came here with the cows hired a car. To take him to Butte? He thought so, yes. Well, Mr. Coney. Yes, Rankin? I found this road map in the truck. Oh, good. Let me see it. It's marked. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get back to Butte. But first, we'll call ahead and charter a plane. Well, baby, there's the lights of Sioux City firing up the sky just ahead. I won't know how to act back in civilization again, Marty. Pretty soon, good old Chicago. And then? 
Then we'll take this steak we got back in Montana and run it up into plenty of living for both of us. If Montana don't catch up with it. Forget it, sweetheart. Forget it. Marty, look. Huh? Those red lights strung across the road ahead. You better slow down. Yeah, I guess they're fixing the road. Somebody waving a flashlight. Maybe it's an accident. Hey, what's cooking, pal? I say, what? Hey, what's the idea of flashing that light in my face? Welcome to Sioux City, Williams. What? And you too, Mrs. Adams. Who are you? What is this? We're special agents of the FBI from Butte, Montana. How'd you know we'd be here? You left a blueprint for us. Huh? That map we found in your truck, it had your route all marked out. Marty, you left a map so they could follow us? I forgot it. Why, you stupid fool! I suggest that you save your arguments for the courtroom when you're tried for murder. Marty Williams was sentenced to be executed for the murder of Jack Adams. Mrs. Adams, implicated in both the murder and the cattle rustling by Williams' testimony at his trial, is now serving a long prison term. The fate of these two petty criminals was, on the whole, unimportant. But it points out what your FBI has constantly attempted to prove to every citizen who might be tempted to make that first fateful step toward a career of crime. That no one makes crime a profitable profession for very long. It is possible to maintain a temporary advantage over the law, but sooner or later, the law must win. Whether the law be represented by your FBI, your local law enforcement agency, or both. Remember that the criminal is not strong. The real strength of the nation is in the solemn dignity of the law. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's exciting story from the files of your FBI. And now again, let me remind you to check with your Equitable Society representative about the safest and wisest investment a parent can make for his children's future, an equitable educational fund. Without obligation, he will also show you the Equitable Society's memorandum on the costs of higher education and some of the opportunities it opens. You'll find your Equitable Society representative in the phone book under the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Death for a Draft Dodger. <laughs> The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Death for a draft dodger on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.